Manfred Weber travels often by plane, at least twice a week as a member of the European Parliament. If a proposal by the European Commission is approved, personal details about him as a passenger will be sent to a European data bank and kept, as a precautionary measure against terrorism, and sent to investigative authorities. This conservative politician considers that's going too far. Eric Josefsson's a lobbyist. Till recently, he worked for the non-governmental organization EFF, whose mandate is to shed light on civil liberties issues related to technology. Now he's specializing in the passenger name record, or PNR. On digital rights, he and Weber share a goal, to stop the commission's project. The destruction of the World Trade Center in 2001 set the stage for a vast rethink. Security, privacy and democracy are all key ingredients in the many recipes being worked on for a reconstructive future. Checks to get into the USA have become stricter since 2001. Now the name of everyone arriving by air is given to the Department of Homeland Security by the carrier they fly. A person can be refused entry or detained. The Americans turned back some 300,000 people last year. Europeans had to adapt. This means divulging a list of information, but the European Commission says the 19 items are not used to identify potential subjects for border examination. The EU agreed the Americans can keep the data stored for seven years. I'm the security agent for the flight. So we're going to verify documents and ask you some uh, security questions. Terrorism implies the systematic use of violent or destructive acts causing widespread fear especially meant to coerce people. The attacks in New York, Madrid and London ramped up government's inclinations to respond preventively to defuse the threat. But doubters such as Weber are calling for limits. In the fight against terror, measures have to be adapted. The proposal we're talking about says all this data from flights in and from the EU should be kept for 13 years. This is disproportionate. Keeping information on people who haven't done anything wrong, and our answer is no. And the PNR proposal introduces uh, a system where there will be per individual, per citizen, a travel profile, uh, which then can be used for purposes uh, that we might not be able to control. And that is extremely dangerous. Um, that is why I think this legislation needs to be revisited first so that we understand what the PNR systems and the booking systems actually do right now, and then see how they should be used, if they can be used, or maybe how they should be changed. Josefsson illustrates his argument with film of the destruction of files kept by the Nazis occupying Amsterdam in 1943, then largely destroyed in a raid by the resistance. The Nazis used their information against targeted groups under their domination. This is a good example to keep in mind that the big systems that we build now that contains personal information about who we are, who we know, who we speak to, where we go, uh, now they fill, fulfill a, maybe a good purpose uh, for businesses and for us. But under another regime, these records can be used for purposes that are not for the benefit of the, of the people. The US government has a list of people identified as suspicious. The watch list has hundreds of thousands of names on it. The Nobel statesman Nelson Mandela and the Senator Ted Kennedy are two of them. A few European Parliament Liberals are on it too. 
people think they're only looking for, for example, young Muslim men who've traveled to Pakistan, who order a halal uh, um, a meal on board. So people think, you know, this doesn't concern me. But what they don't realize is that it concerns a lot of people because this is not only about the fight against terrorism, uh, this is about many other things. Parlamento asked several people on the watch list to express their position on this publicly, but none of them wanted to. They're afraid it might get them refused entry into the US. One of them is a university teacher whose English isn't very good. When questioned at the airport arriving in the States, he gave an answer that got him sent straight back. A Dane whose passport wasn't up to the technological standard required was interrogated for hours at a New York airport. A Dutch lawyer married to an American not carrying her visa was held in custody for two days. I know lots of people who are, you know, Western European. I know a, a Dutch friend of mine who who's not allowed into the United States because of something completely innocuous, which has nothing to do with terrorism. It can happen to anybody. Most members of the European Parliament say they don't want to react to the terrorist attacks in Europe in the same way the United States has to attacks there. Those members who do support the Commission's proposal expect a stalemate. They have declined to speak for the record on Parlamento. The Parliament's relatively unanimous in rejecting the PNR proposal because it questions how effective it would be in fighting organized crime and terrorism. There are members, notably in my own political group, who are in favour, in principle. But one notices they lack arguments to defend the directive. All 27 of the EU governments would need to approve the proposal by former Justice Commissioner Franco Frattini at a meeting coming up in June. And this is not seen as likely to happen. A decision could be delayed. There are too many holes in the proposal. The European Parliament keeps asking the Commission to come up with evidence uh, of the benefits of uh, the collection, the mass collection of passenger data. Uh, and so far, you know, they haven't given us anything. They just claim that they need these data in the fight against terrorism and for many other purposes, because the, the scope um, is widened further and further. And at the same time, they cannot prove that it's actually useful. And the European Parliament is saying, um, you know, we want evidence that it actually works um, because otherwise it's not justified. So here's one liberal who's convinced the Frattini draft won't pass but the idea is not being cleared off the agenda since neither is terrorism. <laughs>